Before you begin assembly, remember, every piece of equipment is only as safe as the person using it. People prevent accidents. Improper use of this equipment will result in serious injury or death. Therefore, it is absolutely necessary that you follow all federal, OSHA, state, and local codes and regulations for the proper use of this equipment. The first step in safely completing the job is having the correct equipment. When choosing the correct scaffolding for the job, you should ask yourself these types of questions. What job am I trying to do? How high must I go? How wide can the frames be? How many work levels will I need? Will I need scaffolding that can be moved on wheels? What types of frames will work best? What types of surface will I be working on? Are there power lines nearby? Will I need brackets, outriggers, or other accessories? Discuss these and other questions you may have with your Bill Jacks dealer. They are the experts. Check all components for damaged, bent, or broken parts. Do not use any of these in the scaffolding setup. Read all safety literature provided with the equipment and read and understand all decals provided on the scaffold components before using them. Now you are ready to begin assembly. OSHA requires all scaffolds shall be erected, moved, dismantled, or altered only under the supervision and direction of a competent person. A competent person qualified in scaffold erection, moving, dismantling, or alterations. Individuals involved in these activities shall be trained by the competent person. A competent person is identified by OSHA as one who is capable of identifying existing and predictable hazards in the surroundings or work conditions which are unsanitary, hazardous, or dangerous to the employees, and who has the authorization to take prompt corrective measures to eliminate them. When assembling the scaffolding, be sure to place the base unit on a level surface capable of carrying the intended load. If the surface is ground or soil, mud sills should be used and attached onto the base plates for them to rest on. Adjustments can be made by using leveling jacks. Start the assembly of the base unit by connecting two diagonal braces to one frame unit. Fasten the braces to the locks provided and secure them. Then assemble the opposite frame to the diagonal braces. Insert a caster, leveling jack, or base plate into each of the frame legs on the base unit and secure with fastening pins or leveling stem retainers. If you are using casters to make a rolling scaffold tower, make sure you lock all casters before continuing the assembly of the tower. A squaring or catacorner brace must be used on the base unit every 20 feet of tower height, on a stationary scaffold, or on a long continuous scaffold run. It is a good idea to install the catacorner brace at the base and every 20 feet of height, each bay horizontally as well. Always be certain the scaffold is plumb and level before adding the next level. Install and fasten insert pins at the top of each frame leg if not already permanently attached to the frames. Next, install a complete deck on top of the first level. Now you are ready to build the next level. Use the same procedures as you did for the level you just completed until you reach your desired height. As additional frames are installed, you must fasten them with lock pins immediately. Extra caution must be used during the erection of the tower when guard railing, cold decking, and access letters have not been installed yet. When feasible, OSHA requires that a full body harness and lanyard attached to an independent lifeline be worn during the assembly or disassembly of the scaffold prior to the installation of the guard rail. Never attach the lanyard or lifeline to any scaffold component. All lifelines must be attached to the independent structure capable of withstanding a 5,000 pound load. Bill Jacks in some states recommends that the maximum freestanding tower height permitted for a rolling tower be three times the smallest base dimension. However, OSHA codes allow a ratio of four to one. 
Consult your state and local codes to make sure your tower complies with all regulations. The use of outriggers can increase a small base dimension sufficiently enough to allow you to add additional sections and still comply with the base to height code. If you use outriggers, use them at all four corners and secure in place. OSHA requires that all freestanding stationary scaffolds in excess of the 4 to 1 height ratio be anchored to prevent tipping. The first anchor must be installed as near as possible to the frame ledger at a vertical height not to exceed the 4 to 1 ratio. Additional ties must be installed at vertical intervals not to exceed 20 feet on a narrow scaffold and 26 feet on scaffolds wider than 3 feet. The top tie must be within the 4 to 1 ratio from the top. Ties must be installed at each end of the scaffold and at a maximum distance horizontally of 30 feet. This must be done at every vertical tie level. The top level of your scaffold is generally the work level, and this should be fully decked and have guard railing installed. If an intermediate level is used, it too should be fully decked and have guard railing installed. Side guard rails, end guard rails, and tow boards must be used. Check all guard rails to make sure they are installed properly and pinned, and that all the walk boards are secured. Proper access to the work platform can be attained in a variety of ways. For specific information, please reference the OSHA regulations. Two of the most common methods of access are by using an attachable climbing ladder or, when using step frames, by climbing the steps. If using an attachable climbing ladder, the ladder section should be installed as the tower assembly progresses. Be certain to tighten each bracket clamp securely. At the top, the ladder must extend a minimum of 3 feet above the platform when completed. When using step frames, the rungs may be climbed as long as the frames are stacked with rungs in a continuous vertical run and the rung spacing is uniform and no more than 16 and 3 fourths inches. Uniform rung spacing is not required when the frames are joined together. Rest platforms are required at intervals not to exceed 35 feet. When the assembly of the scaffold is complete, recheck, making sure all components are properly installed and fastened securely. Remember, if when installing or removing the scaffold walkboards and one should get dropped, inspect it immediately for damage, especially damage to one or more of the mounting hooks. If you detect damage, remove the walkboard from service and return it to the dealer. Do not attempt to strain damaged hooks the dealer will replace them. Do not use wood planking on a rolling tower. Wood planking may however be used on stationary scaffolds. Check OSHA codes for proper planking information. If you spill corrosive material like paint, grease, or oil on a walkboard, remove it from service and neutralize or clean the area immediately. Use guard railing and tow boards as required by OSHA. Corner off areas around the scaffold when work is being done to keep personnel away. Never exceed the state or local maximum height regulations for a freestanding or rolling tower. Install outriggers or tie the scaffold to a permanent structure if it exceeds them. If casters are used, unlock them only to move the scaffold. Never ride a moving scaffold and secure all materials and tools and check for overhead obstructions before attempting to move the tower. When it is in a new position, relax all casters immediately. Do not try to move a scaffold tower from the top. Use an attachable ladder or the frame ladder steps for access. Do not climb on the diagonal bracing. Never use ladders, boxes, or other devices to attain a greater height from the deck. Check the work area for electrical power lines or other overhead obstructions. Remember, metal conducts electricity. Do not use this equipment in areas where the contact may be made with power lines or other live electrical circuits. Failure to comply with the preceding warning will result in serious personal injury or death. 
Do not apply horizontal loads, force, or impact loads to the scaffold tower or components, especially on narrow scaffolds. Do not use side brackets on a tower equipped with casters. Never exceed the rated capacity of the scaffold walkboards with the combined weight of personnel, materials, and tools. Check the capacity rating located on each walkboard. Check with the manufacturer for frame capacities and other heavy-duty loading information. Billjax manufactures many other products. Visit billjax.com or see your local Billjax distributor or rental store for more information. Billjax is committed to you, our customer. We're committed to providing you superior designed equipment, and we back that up with detailed information on its proper use and safe use. This video explains suggested scaffold tower erection procedures. All OSHA, state, and local codes and regulations pertaining to this equipment should be attained, read, and thoroughly understood before attempting to erect or use this equipment. Persons under the influence of drugs, alcohol, or prescription medication should not be on or near this equipment. Common sense should be used at all times during the erection and the use of this equipment. Do not use this equipment in areas where the equipment or user may come in contact with live power sources.